Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. We've been getting uh, a lot of new subscribers to the channel lately, and uh, I would like to, first of all, take the opportunity to welcome and say, hey, how's it going? And uh, uh, also to bring some people up to speed, there's probably some nomenclature that I toss around that you know, I've mentioned in the past and kind of gets uh, taken for granted, but if you're just coming into it, you're going to wonder when I'm going to tell you what it is I'm talking about. And I try to show it as much as, as talk about it, but I'd like to clarify uh, something because it gets into the essence of the alchemy part of of what we're doing here. And that is that we are we're creating this body, mind, spirit integration that enables us to do cool stuff and to uh, open to energy and information that is unavailable in a state where it's more fragmented, where it's less, where it's less unified. And so the, uh, you know, the idea is you're, you're learning to integrate these parts not just by letting them do what they want, but you're actually bringing some thought to the to the moment. You're you're controlling your body, controlling your mind, and controlling your spirit as you do this. And so, when I say control, that means you're you're regulating things in such a way as to allow the uh, the alchemy to happen. And so, you know, if you go into something and there is no sense of order, there is no sense of, of form to it, you're just kind of doing whatever, uh, you're not going to get the same kind of benefit as if you're following along and actually taking the steps that are necessary to make something happen. So the... Um, place I'd like to start is the, uh, the idea of uh, central equilibrium, because this is a really key concept to what, what I'm talking about. And it's, it's not, I didn't invent that. It's, 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 it's as old as Tai Chi Chuan and, and uh, the Chinese term for it is Zhong Ding. And it's and basically what we're talking about is aligning your structure, your body in such a way that, that you are able to go into resonance, you're able to resonate with nature in, in a way that amplifies your personal energy. So nature is doing just fine without us, um, but we're maybe sometimes better without us. And, uh, but we are participants in this, this adventure. And whenever we want if, if we want to get more into sync with the way things are, then we, if we align our bodies in such a way that, that the least amount of effort is required in order to maintain the structure, then something happens. You're, you get this connection with something much bigger and you know for one of a better explanation we call it in the traditional terms like the the yin chi of the earth and the yang chi of the heavens and so the yin chi of the earth is you know the yin is if we think of yin and yang as yang being that which is expansive it's reaching out it's opening to something new and yin being contractive and consolidative it gives whatever is going on a big hug it's it's coming more and more so we have this these two opposing poles and they're exemplified by the young of the heavens which is light and airy and 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 very insubstantial and the earth which is very solid and fixed and and secure and that's very substantial. So the yin of the earth um, has its own energy and that energy 
whenever we tap into the big chi, that is the chi of the heavens and the chi of the earth, then cool stuff happens. You're going to experience a, a difference in your personal energy when you do that. It's because you're clearing away the distractions that you are creating just by the way you stand, walk, sit, and you you lose that sense of being in sync with with the with that uh, that central pillar that unites these these two energies. So when we get the we embody that central pillar, we get that then fun stuff happens, and um, we get we're able to tap into effortless power at that point. And it's really quite uncanny if you haven't if you haven't experienced it yet, but uh, uh, it's easily demonstrable and something that uh, you can repeat it at will. So that's kind of cool. But you got to control your circumstances so that you can make this happen. You have to, you know, find a, a place there you can you can work, and you then have to control your body in such a way as to to move it in a into position despite the prejudices that are built into your, you know, what's called the proprioceptive system. That is, the proprioception is, is the way that your, your mind and body kind of draws a map of your relationship to the world. And most of us are actually out of, out of balance with that. And so what Taiji Tran has done a really stellar job of uh, making happen is, is giving us a blueprint for how to overcome these these prejudices that we have in our proprioception to enable us to tap into something which is quite remarkable. So the key to that is that whenever you're standing, you know you want to you know have some sense of first of all your contact with the with the earth and the the first thing I want to point out is this part of my foot here along my big toe line there that uh, the ball of my foot so that big knobby thing there on, on the big toe line is what I'm referring to when I talk about the ball of the foot and um, it's different than the energy point which a lot of people will know which is the Yong Chuan point which is right here so the ball is right here and the Yong Chuan is right here and the young trend is is uh, sometimes called the bubbling well or the bubbling spring, because this is the point where the energy is exchanged with the earth. It's the main gate that the energy is is that. So whenever we are connecting up through the balls of the feet, then that opens that that energy gate and allows this. Uh, the, the floodgates to open and you start connecting up with the yin chi of the earth. Simultaneously, the yang chi that is coming down through the body empties out into the earth. So you got this two-way flow happening there. So the, uh, the other place, if we want to, to go, that, that will get, create more of a, a yang or expansive kind of energy. If we want to go yin, we go to the heel. So we got right there, we get, we get that still on the inside of the foot. That is along the big toe line. So uh, we get that and we, we want to have that sense of connection there. So it's a conscious control there where you are saying, oh, I'm going to be young now. And you go into the balls of your feet and you feel that, that rising, lifting kind of energy. When you go into the heels, you go, and you, oh, it's more of a, a descending, coming in kind of energy. And that's that's kind of cool. And we'll get to we'll play with that in a little bit. But this is we're getting some of the nomenclature established here. So that that's sort of the, the 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 negative pole of the of the system. That is where you connect up with the earth. The positive pole is right here at the crown of the head. And there's an energy spot right there in the in the center top of your head called the Bai Hui, which is, um, that's the energy gate that, that connects up with the, uh, with, uh, with the, the Yang Chi of the heavens. 
and energy is is connected up through that gate. But <clears throat> similar to the uh, the foot, we don't sit on the Yang Tran. We don't sit on the bumping well point. We go into the ball of the foot or in the heel, depending what the what we're creating. These are we're creating the structure necessary to allow that energy to flow. Same thing here. If, if I want to feel more energy flowing through the Bai Hui, I'm going to reach not with the that point, but with the, the the crown of my head, which you can see right there is is this point here. If you look at that hair whirl, that uh, the the posterior fontanelle, the soft spot in your skull, then that is the uh, that's uh, that's kind of the the bullseye for your your crown and um, the. Um, uh, Cheng Man Cheng uh, used to talk about. He says, like uh, as if you're hanging from your top knot. So the uh, the old Ch Chinese men used to have this this uh, braid, this queue that they would wear, and and you uh, if you were hanging from your queue, that was yeah, that was the the point there where you're you're reaching from. You know, sometimes people talk about hanging from that, and um, I've actually uh, found it much more uh, effective if you gently reach with your with the crown rather than get the idea that you're hanging from the, from the crown so there's a so what what that does whenever you do reach from that is you you open up this area here at the base of your skull particularly the spot right here at the top at the topmost vertebra there, the, the atlas here, topmost vertebra. And that's, there's a hole there, which is called the foramen magnum, which is Latin for big hole. And that is, uh, that's where the spine enters into the skull. And uh, so that's where your, the, the connection between your cranium and, and your spine happens. And if it's the hose is kinked there, you know, which a lot of people tend to have uh, their chin jutting forward or lifting up or whatever. And so that the, the, their head is tilted backward, then there's a kink in the hose there, which causes the, the cerebral spinal fluid to, to back up. And it creates a disruption there. And a lot of people get stress headaches from, from holding their head like that. And it's basically that your body mind telling you, hey, buddy, come on, loosen up there. And because you're, you're cutting off circulation. So not only, not only is it kinking the hose uh, in terms of cerebral spinal fluid, but also uh, your blood. The blood flow to the brain is reduced uh, significantly whenever you do that. And so it makes you dull and and tired and stressed out and you get kind of cranky and that kind of thing and it what it does is it collapses your jing shen your spirit of vitality so the this your body's natural desire to to be and do is uh, kind of on, it gets depressed by simply by having the ho the hose kink. You can think of it as like a a garden hose and the water. If you just you know if you put a kink in it and hold that, you know, then the water flow is going to drop down to you know to zero or close. And then you release the kink and like oh water's going. And same thing happens with your with your spine, with your cerebral spinal fluid, with the, you know, there's, I'm not gonna get too technical on that, but it's a, you know, basically there's stuff that is going between your torso through your neck into your head and back down that you wanna keep flowing. And whenever you kink the hose, it, it prevents that from flowing smoothly. So whenever you reach with the, 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 the knee one or with the, uh, the crown here, 
one of the effects is to lengthen the spine and to open the uh, that that place at the base of your skull. And it's uh, the name is uh, we get it as a very nice name, Jade Pillow Gate. And it, the, the Jade Pillow Gate points in acupuncture are right beside the uh, the foramen magnum there to, to either side of it. And um, but I'm using the term to refer to that whole area. And with the the atlas there with that, you know, that that hole there being the, uh, you know, the bullseye. So if we if we if we reach with the crown and tuck in the chin, we lengthen the uh, lengthen the cervical vertebrae. The neck gets longer, and we open up space between the uh, between the individual vertebrae, and you, it gives you it takes some of the strain out of your neck. So people who have a lot of trouble, a lot of uh, neck tension and shoulder tension, stuff like that, a lot of it has to do with having this this compression there, and they're not really um, your body's giving you signals that hey, I don't like this. And but you don't know what to do about it, and so you go to a chiropractor and you get your you get popped or whatever, and and that helps for a day or two, and then it's back to the same old because why you are still doing that. So we are controlling our head. We're saying, hey, we're reaching with the crown. So we're and what that does is it establishes a this two pole system between the the, uh, the feet and the top of the head, so it creates this the this energy flow that happens between them. And the more we can lengthen that and straighten that straighten that out, and get rid of the kinks not just there but all the way down the spine, the smoother the things flow along that line. You know, not just blood and cerebral spinal fluid, but also the lymph and uh, uh, and chi and the, the energy, get the energy to flow correctly. So the, uh, if we get the uh, central equilibrium, we get establish our base and we align the top of the head with our feet in such a way that there's, you find that sweet spot there where there's, mm, it, it changes. And you, you'll probably, when you first explore it, it, you get, you get kind of, you feel kind of vulnerable. You get it, um, uh, Cheng Man Cheng said, you'll feel precarious. And when you do, you're, you're doing it right. It's because most of us have been leaning backward and kind of in this retreat most of our lives and and to actually go out and extend and get centered over you know over your feet like that creates this um a dynamic effect that we're not used to so the uh, getting learning to reach and get those those points there aligned is is crucial to plugging into the big chi and then that allows for the energy to expand you start to you start to create more energy in your brain which is very important that's because your brain is a very small part of your body. It's just a few pounds, but it consumes about 20% of your resources, whether you're sleeping or not. It's a, it's a busy little guy and it is popping away. All the, so we're getting more resources to the, to the brain. means that it doesn't have to work so hard just to keep going. It actually, it then starts to open up into new territory. 
It's not just subsistence living, it becomes more expansive. Your brain becomes quite affluent in terms of its resources, which point it then can open up to new possibilities. It takes you out of that primitive kind of reptile brain struggle to survive kind of fear-based life and allows you to look around and say, hey, what else is possible? But that requires resources. That requires lots of, of energy happening there. And so um, I was reading in with uh, uh, Yang Jing Ming is a, a Taiji teacher who's very uh, prolific in his writings. He's written dozens of books and has done a lot of research on the old Taoist um, literature about um, cultivation exercises and the like. And he's saying that it is you have to get more, the cells in your brain need to be fed better in order to be able to awaken your spirit, your, your, your Shen. And it, it, it's very difficult to get your spirit alive if your spirit of vitality is depressed, if there are kinks in the hose and you're creating a lot of dissonance within the system. So going back to the idea of control, we're having to create a structure that is aligned and predictable. And so then we can, ah, the brain is no longer consumed as much with just uh, sorting you out. It is, can then turn its attention to other things. Those resources can be used for other things. And then we get to move into this expanded state of awareness, which is always there, kind of in the background. It's your, you know, your constant companion, but your it doesn't get attention because your 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 mind is so caught up in and all the other things, all the worries of life. So if we're talking about this alchemy, we want to get more resources to the brain because it requires a certain amount of energy for the for this um, activity to occur in the brain. So just to, uh, I'm going to get wonky here for a while, so bear with me. But uh, all this is kind of important, and it, you know, we your brain is separated into these, your 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 cortex is your is separated into two hemispheres: your left hemisphere, your right hemisphere, and, then, and largely your left hemisphere controls the right side of your body. The right hemisphere controls the left side of the body, and that's you know a general rule. It does does it not all the time, but it's it, it's a general rule. And the other thing is they don't talk to each other so well. There's a, a divide between the two hemispheres. And the Dallas called that the spiritual valley. And so there is this, this separation of the, between, between that and that spiritual valley in someone who doesn't have a lot of resources in their, their brain, there it, it tends to be very quiet in the spiritual valley. That's because there's not a lot of uh, uh, not a lot of activity left and right that is that is demanding that the brain go to this next level of excitement. And uh, whenever it does, you get this state of resonance in the spiritual valley. Whenever there's lots of energy there, and the and in the spiritual valley, you get the this 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 resonance occurs. And this is very similar to what I've experienced with um, um, what's called hemispheric synchronization. It's something that I've been playing with for over 30 years and, um, you know, mostly done with something called binaural beats. That is 
you put one sound in one ear and a a another sound in in the other ear, and they're fairly close. And the difference in terms of their the beats per second will have an effect on your brain. That is, you will your the hemispheres of your brain will entrain to that that pulsing. So let's say if there's only say um, eight beats per second. Let's say I put 440 in my left ear and 448 in my right ear, and I play those and sustain that, my brain is going to first say, what's going on here? This is, we're getting two different signals. It, and then it will eventually resolve that and start tapping its toe to eight beats per second. And what that corresponds to, it's called an alpha rhythm. You've heard of alpha waves, but that's uh, that's what we're talking about there. And that's close to the pulse of the earth. That's, you know, something that the earth is pulsing. There's a, the atmosphere around the earth is as about, as called the Schumann resonance and it pulses about, about 7.83 cycles per second. And so when you do that, you start to, you start to groove to, the pulse of the earth, whenever you go into that, you know, that Schumann resonance. So it's like, oh, okay. And it also, the alpha state is alert, but relaxed and that kind of thing, calm, that kind of thing. So that's a kind of an ideal state for us Taiji people to be in. We kind of get into this nice flowing kind of deal and, and that kind of thing. So whenever we get into the state of hemispheric synchronization, I believe that that is the spiritual valley is resonating. And we're starting to get this sense of whole brain coherence whenever that occurs. And that's that's terrific. It's like I said, it's something I've been doing for a long time. I did some earlier today and it's a lot of fun. And and uh, you get to play with different kinds of frequencies that you want to, but it's limited. And that's because you're not doing anything with the rest of your body it's all happening in your brain and what taiji tran does is it tries to bring you into sync not just in your brain but as a whole body experience you get that whole body energetic connection and it's super important to get your brain on on you know on 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 the uh good terms with that because it it is the commander it is what's what's keeping order amongst the whole uh, the whole system but we can get too far to to emphasize too much so that we lose track with the other things so when we're doing these exercises taiji or qigong or other forms of internal arts we are consciously moving we are consciously feeling uh, what that does is we, it brings the element of volition or choice into the mat into the into the into the equation in order to be able to connect your brain to your hand say there is there is a something that has to be initiated by the executive function of your brain in order to make that happen and even if you don't believe that it's possible, you know, it's good to pretend to do it that way because it works. And uh, so when we get this central equilibrium, we are opening up to the big chi. And since the, the big chi is a virtually infinite energy source, that is, it's the energy of the universe. And depending how deep you go, how much you can handle with your body mind you're going to get that much and you get to direct it to the to fire up your your brain in such a way as to create an opportunity to then create this alchemy create this 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 spiritual state so the you know the 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 term that is used in in the in Taiji Chuan in the Taoist community, particularly, is uh, the term Niwan, 
uh, N-I-W-A-N. And Miwan is the literal translation for Niwan is the mud pill, M-U-D-P-I-L-L. It's a mud pill. And it, it's a description of the pineal gland, which was considered to be a, um, uh, the seat of the soul. I think Rene Descartes called it that in the, in um, the uh, oh, probably like the 17th century, I think. And he, uh, he called the pineal gland the, the seat of the soul. And it had a, a lot of, in the, the Taoist community, had a lot of, uh, of implications for that as well. And so the, uh, the mud pill, and there is a location. The, so this, the pineal gland is right, almost dead center in your brain. It's actually below the that split that that spiritual valley is right below that, and kind of dead center in your in your brain. So it is very close to the pituitary gland, which is the master gland of the uh, of the endocrine system, and so the two of them create what's called the the niwan. Uh, or the you know, the Niwan Valley or the mud mud pill va uh, valley I think it's I think it's valley uh, and uh, so there's this this little spot there where the uh, uh, where that's happening and uh, um, it has profound implications in a lot of different spiritual and esoteric communities the this this point in your brain so the Niwan uh, has two points of of access in terms of you know external and one one is right here at the at the upper dantian right between your your eyebrows there and you uh, at uh, your third eye your uh, the um, it's also called the uh, uh, heaven's eye and in, uh, in and some of the Taoist literature, and this is an access point for the for those those two glands, and then the other point is right there at the back there, at the crown, where you are at that uh, posterior fontanelle. So these two points are the yin and the yang of uh, of the ni wan, and so whenever I sometimes you'll hear me talk about lifting with the knee one and i'm talking about this one here uh, the posterior one um but at the same time this this one here is also really uh very important in this in the uh, in this in this development part of this alchemy that i'm talking about so um let's play with that a little bit uh when we stand up and uh and See if we can create a little alchemy. What's up? Well, my mouse isn't. Hmm? My mouse isn't responding. Uh oh. Well, they can see me. I see. Oh, so you're going to give me a fade out. Okay. So let's uh, let's just begin with the feet um, hip width, and so we're going to explore some of these ideas here. And even if you've done this a million times, we'll get it to show that. Uh, there we go. So begin by feeling into the balls of your feet. So on the inside of your foot, there at that, on the big toe line. So even if you've done this before, understanding what's going on here, and that is you're making a connection through the Yong Chuan points. I pointed out right there at the, in the center of the foot. You're connecting up to the Yin Chi of the earth as you do this. So when I say you're settling over the balls of the feet, you wanna kind of feel your weight 
pressing down on that more so than the other the rest of the foot. You're going to touch with the rest of the foot, but that's the that's the place we are going to do it. And a lot of uh, a lot of people start off having their weight on the outside of their foot. That is on the you know, around the, the little toe or else they're leaning backward into their heels. And so just getting this established and for people who've done this before, you know, just, I want you to do it this time, bringing more awareness to the bubbling well. The bubbling well is that energy gate that is, is allowing the energy of the earth to, to rise into your body, allowing the excess energy to ground through your feet and into the earth. But right now, what we're doing is, is a real simple Yong Chuan meditation. We're feeling into the that point and and feel the energy creating this expansiveness in your body mind. Feel your feel into your hands and notice that they're starting to fill up, tingling or pulsing. You may notice some heat there. Not just because we are increasing the flow of chi in the body. So that creating more available energy. We're tapping into the big chi so that we're getting that. Okay, now reach up with the crown of your head, tuck in the chin, and open the jade pillow gate. You're gonna feel your neck actually lengthening. You're kind of reaching up with it, but not pushing it up. So it may sound paradoxical, but it's just a very gentle kind of kind of reach and just allowing your you're not stretching it so much as allowing it to unwind, allowing it to reclaim some of its space. So what's happened over decades is is gravity has been pulling down on your head and unless you've been doing this, it's collapsing your neck vertebrae. It's causing them to get shortened together. And over time, people tend to get shorter when they don't do this. That's just because the, there's less space between the vertebrae. So by just by lengthening this and opening the jade pillow gate, we are changing our energy. Opening the jade pillow gate enhances your spirit of vitality. And you may or may not feel that immediately. Because there's a, a sweet spot with that too. There's a, there's a way of doing, of holding your head that allows for maximum efficiency and improved flow. In the uh, in the in the energy going into into your brain. So by increasing the resources of your brain, you're actually improving its functioning. You're slowing down the wear and tear on the brain. You're slowing down its premature aging. And consequently, improve memory, imagination. You're also, it allows you to be more serene in your, in your life. So just feel into your hands and notice there's a lot going on there now. And that's because we're filling up with Yang Chi. It's coming up through the balls of your feet or through the, uh, the Yang Tran points, the bubbling well. And by reaching up with the crown, the crown here, we're also opening up that Bai Hui point there at the, at the top of the head and allowing the Yong Chi of the heavens to, to connect up. 
And so you're filling up with energy at this point. And now sink into your heels without leaning backwards. So this is a little tricky for if you're just new to this, but just you want to have it so your weight is centered over the front part of your heel. So you feel yourself sinking down, down into the heel, soften your, your knees and allow yourself to sink down. And doing so allows you to feel the, the energy moving in a yin direction, that is moving down toward the earth. There's, it's in and down. And even though we're doing that, we're simultaneously reaching up with the crown of the head. Keep that, those two poles established. So, and everything, there's always some yin and the yang, there's always some yang and the yin. So even here, when we're going into the, into the yin position, we're feeling, we're also reaching with the crown of the head and feel yourself relaxing down into, into, the, into your feet, into your heels, and feel the quality of the feelings that are going on in your feet, how it's different than in the ball of your feet. So now we're going to go back to the balls. Go back to the balls of your feet. You're going to sink into, you're going to go back there. You're just a little bit forward so that you're feeling your weight over the, the balls of your feet, reach up to the crown of the head. And we're going back to creating this yang flow. Opening the jade pillow gate. We're feeding into the brain and creating some excitement there in that spiritual valley. And that resonance that you start to feel there, you may not notice it yet, but you may notice that your mind is clear, that you're really very present. So your brain is starting to move into a state of hemispheric synchronization as you do this. You're getting more of a whole brain coherence. Yeah, as you do this, you see what you can let go, see what kinks you can let go in the body. And go back into your heels. Don't lean back, just sink into the heels, soften your legs, and ah, going down. See yourself dropping down, still reaching with the crown. Now, bring awareness into your left hand. And just allow yourself to control your attention and bring it to your left hand. Just feel into that. Just by bringing attention to your left hand, it becomes more substantial than the right and than it was before. Because by bringing attention to something, we create more substantiality there. We create more fixity, more density. Your left hand is being controlled by the right hemisphere of your brain. Go into the balls of your feet and feel that. Just to 
if you need to wiggle your, you can move your, your hand a bit just to get, make sure you're establishing contact there. And notice that just by bringing attention to that for a sustained period, so we, we haven't been doing it very long, but it creates an energy flow in that hand. That's because the, the mind leads the chi. You go to the heels. And let that go. Bring your attention back to both hands. Feel that energy moving down and in, in, sinking into the, sinking into the earth. As the more you sink into the earth, paradoxically, the more the earth chi rises and fills. Now bring your awareness to your right hand. So you're controlling your attention. You're saying, okay, I'm thinking, not thinking about my right hand, but I'm feeling it. Letting go of the left hand. So disconnecting most of the attention. You're still going to have some there, but most of your attention is moving now to your right hand. Now go into the balls of your feet. Your right hand is controlled by the left hemisphere of your brain. Feel, you may have to continue to disconnect or to withdraw attention from your left hand because it got very uh, excited by all the attention. And to be able to empty that out may require a conscious decision on your part to fill up your right hand. But just feel into that and notice now that the, the right hand is starting to get a little more sparkly. And what's happening also is your left hemisphere is more active. How good are your heels? Still feeling that right hand. Now let that go and bring your awareness to both hands. And feel the energy sinking in and down as the yang chi of the heavens flushes down through the body and through your feet and into the earth, through the yang tran points, through the bubbling well. And then just notice your current state. Now bring your awareness to your left hand. Feel that. Now let that go. Bring it to the right hand. Let that go. Left hand. It may help to spread your fingers a little bit on the on the hand. Bring it to the right hand. Just spread your hand, fingers a little bit and just feel that. Feel that filling up. Let that go. Left hand, spread the fingers, open that up. So by shifting back and forth like this, continue to, to do that, shift back and forth. And what we're doing is we're consciously activating our brain, the left and right hemispheres. 
lighting them up. And then let them both go. And just relax and just pause and, and just feel into your body. Sink into the heels. Feel into the stillness. And notice the energetic activity that's happening throughout your body mind. Now step in with your left foot. Take a deep breath. Gather the energy up. Yang, yang, go to the balls of your feet. Feel it and then go to your heels and yin, 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 sink. And throw that all away. Dissolve. Just feel into the emptiness. Please have a seat. I warned you it was going to get wonky. How'd that go? Good. Good. <laughs> Sharon. Um, I had an interesting experience. I couldn't sustain it, but when we went into yin at one point, I felt as though I was standing on a pillow. Hmm. But I, and then I was surprised that I was steady being on a pillow. <laughs> Very nice. Nice. Jonathan. Yeah, you're on, you're on mute, Jonathan. Still on mute. Hey, yeah. A lot of qigong, a lot of qigong stuff. The hands are above the waist, and uh, so th when the hands are this free, it does seem to give you a sort of freedom to sort of do subtle play with them. Like I, at some point, I was like like doing ward offs, but not doing ward offs. Where like you know the left hand was pretending it was you know this, and the right hand was the yin, and feeling that dynamic. Um. It's really exciting, this, this, this business of moving between the hands so much, because that totally takes care of monkey mind. You know, when you're sitting or other kinds of standing, and I'm gonna, I got 10 days coming up with a lot of meditation, and I like to stand while other people are sitting. And this is great. You know, this is just, because thoughts are gonna go crazy, you know, but this is, you got thoughts, good, put them on your hands. <laughs> thoughts we can deal with here, right? You know, it's, this, this, is, this is very, very good. Very, oh, very, good. very good. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Scott. <clears throat> so I've given up asking you questions because you just have just been answering the questions that I don't ask. So <laughs> and I'm I'm dead serious. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's it's good. I don't, to, I don't have to speak. I you know, you just you just get it. It's just the Vulcan mind melt. <laughs> Um, no, because sometimes I want to practice, but I just don't really have the energy or I don't feel like doing my form again. So this is definitely something I can do when I'm when I'm not, you know, when I don't really feel like doing my form or something. And um, I've always had trouble standing 
and it's been getting better since we've been doing this classes. But um, tonight, you know, I had almost no trouble at all. So that's that's a that's that's a good thing. When we went when we went from the first time, you had us go back to both hands. I it felt like I was sitting on a, on a geyser. I mean, the energy just went like straight up through me. And then the second time, it went the opposite way, which was just kind of weird. <laughs> it got wonky. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Terrific. Hmm. It's, it's really amazing how much Tai Chi throughout the day you can be doing. You forget the form almost. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, as if this wasn't enough for 10 years. Then it was like, just feel the elbows a little. Now it's kind of just feel your left foot, feel your right foot, feel your left. I mean, when are you going to stop doing Tai Chi with this, with this <laughs> kind of practice? <laughs> Every time you do that, and that left-right awareness, you know, it makes connections, makes new neural connections in your, in your brain, and you're, you're able to, to negotiate life just a little bit better by, by making those connections. It's amazing. It's like, you know, okay, I got a button for my right brain and a button for my left brain, and I can just bump, bump, <laughs> bump, keep lighting them up, but not even doing that. Just, just, you know, just a little pulsing I feel and bring my heel into it, bring my ball of my foot in it. And I'm doing Tai Chi all day. I mean, it's really kind of cool. <laughs> Terrific. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, anybody else? All good? Okay. Um, thank you all so much. It's been great. Thank you. Thank you, Love you Maria. Thank you, Thanks, Maria. Maria. Love you guys. Love you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. Yeah.